Was there ever a female pope? Let's discover the story of Pope Joan. Imagine a time when women had little power and society was dominated by men. In this world, a woman dared to disguise herself as a man, not only to enter the church but to rise to the highest position within it, the papacy itself. Could it be true? Could a woman have truly ruled the Catholic Church under a false identity? This is the extraordinary legend of Pope Joan, a tale filled with courage, ambition, and, ultimately, tragedy. To truly appreciate the legend of Pope Joan, we must first understand the historical context in which her story unfolds. The 9th century was a pivotal time for the Catholic Church and Europe as a whole. During this period, the papacy was not just a spiritual authority but also a significant political force. Popes wielded immense power, often influencing the course of kingdoms and the lives of countless individuals. However, this power was firmly held within a patriarchal structure, where women were largely excluded from positions of authority. Women were relegated to subordinate roles, often seen as caretakers and homemakers. Their contributions to society, including their intellectual and spiritual capabilities, were frequently overlooked or undervalued. Though some women found solace and power within convents, the opportunities for women to rise in religious ranks were extremely limited. The prevailing belief was that leadership within the church was solely reserved for men. Against this backdrop of societal norms and constraints, the legend of Pope Joan emerges, a story of a woman challenging the status quo. How did she navigate a world that saw her as inferior? What drove her to pursue a path so fraught with danger? As we delve deeper into Joan's journey, keep in mind the limitations and expectations of her time. These factors not only shaped her life but also the very fabric of the legend we are about to explore. The story begins in the early 9th century in Mainz, Germany, where a young woman named Joan is born. She is not just any ordinary girl, she possesses an insatiable thirst for knowledge and an intelligence that sets her apart from her peers. In a society where women were largely confined to domestic roles, Joan dreams of a life beyond the constraints imposed upon her. She yearns for the education and intellectual stimulation that is largely reserved for men. To pursue her ambitions, she takes a bold step. Joan disguises herself as a man, adopting the name Johannes Anglicus. This transformation is not merely physical, it is a complete reinvention of her identity. With her newfound persona, she is able to enter a world where women are not allowed to tread. Joan quickly rises through the ranks of the church. Her intelligence, eloquence, and charisma win the respect of her male peers, allowing her to participate in theological debates and discussions that were traditionally off-limits to women. She becomes known as an astute scholar and a gifted orator, captivating audiences with her insights. It is said that her talents were so remarkable that she caught the eye of influential clerics, paving her way to greater power. Eventually, Joan's journey leads her to Rome, where her brilliance and leadership capabilities thrust her into a position of prominence. She defies the expectations of her time, maneuvering through a world dominated by men and achieving what no woman before her has done, she becomes the Pope taking the name Pope John VIII. In this new role, Joan is not just a figurehead, she is a powerful leader, making significant decisions that impact the church and its followers. But as her influence grows, so does the complexity of her situation. How long can she maintain this facade? What challenges lie ahead for a woman who has defied the very fabric of society? As Pope John VIII, Joan steps into one of the most influential positions in the world. She embodies a unique blend of authority, intellect, and compassion, breaking through the barriers that have long kept women from the highest echelons of power in the church. During her papacy, Joan quickly becomes known for her progressive policies and reforms. She initiates discussions on critical issues facing the church, from the handling of clerical corruption to the importance of education for the clergy. Her ability to navigate the complexities of church politics earns her the respect and loyalty of many. Unlike her predecessors, Joan makes a point to connect with the laity. She listens to their concerns, attends to their needs, and emphasizes the importance of pastoral care. Her popularity among the common people grows, and she becomes a beloved figure in Rome, a stark contrast to the often elitist attitudes of her male counterparts. 
Joan's diplomatic acumen shines as she forges alliances with powerful leaders across Europe. Her negotiations stabilize political tensions and secure peace agreements, showcasing her ability to balance both spiritual and secular matters. As she leads the church through a period of relative peace and prosperity, whispers of her identity circulate among the cardinals and clerics. Yet, her charm and competence help her maintain control, even as she navigates the treacherous waters of political intrigue. But as with any great story, challenges loom on the horizon. Joan must constantly be vigilant, aware that one misstep could expose her true identity and bring her world crashing down. How long can she continue this precarious charade? Behind the grandeur and success lies an undercurrent of fear. Dissent within the church grows, and rival factions emerge, eager to undermine her authority. Joan's journey is fraught with danger, and the question remains, will her legacy endure, or will the truth come to light? As the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. For Pope Joan, her remarkable rise to power is overshadowed by an impending fall from grace. Despite her success, the pressure of maintaining her disguise intensifies with every passing day. With her popularity growing, so too do the whispers and suspicions among the clergy. Some cardinals begin to question her authority, and dissent brews in the shadows. The stakes are higher than ever, and Joan must be vigilant, every decision she makes could lead to her undoing. The turning point comes during a public procession, where Pope Joan leads her followers through the streets of Rome, radiating confidence and grace. But amidst the cheers of the crowd, a sudden and shocking incident shatters the facade. Legend has it that during this procession, Joan unexpectedly goes into labor. The moment is both shocking and tragic, in an era when the sanctity of the papacy was unquestionable, the revelation of her true identity could not remain hidden. The crowd's reaction is swift and unforgiving. As she gives birth in the public eye, the truth is laid bare. Joan, the revered pope, is revealed to be a woman. The shockwaves of her exposure ripple through the church, igniting chaos and scandal. Once the truth is out, the reaction is fierce. The cardinals, feeling betrayed and humiliated, quickly turn against her. Joan is denounced as a heretic, a deceitful woman who has sullied the very office she held. The fallout is swift, and the church's reputation hangs in the balance. According to various accounts, her fate diverges. Some say she is dragged from the papal residence and met with a brutal punishment, while others suggest she flees in desperation, her legacy tarnished forever. Regardless of the outcome, the myth of Pope Joan is cemented in history. Joan's fall serves as a stark reminder of the risks faced by those who challenge societal norms. Her story is not just one of ambition and power, but also one of tragedy, raising questions about gender, identity, and the enduring fight for equality. The story of Pope Joan has sparked extensive debate among historians, theologians, and scholars for centuries. Was she a real figure, or merely a legendary character born from the imaginations of those who yearned for a powerful female leader? The earliest references to Joan appear in chronicles and texts written centuries after her purported reign. The most notable account comes from the Chronicon of Martin of Opava, penned in the 13th century, which recounts her story with a blend of admiration and caution. Yet, the absence of contemporary records raises questions. Many historians argue that the lack of solid evidence casts doubt on the authenticity of her papacy. Could it be that Joan was a myth, a cautionary tale woven into the fabric of history to illustrate the dangers of women's ambition? On one side, we have scholars who believe the legend reflects genuine historical events. They argue that Joan's tale may have roots in real-life figures who challenged the patriarchal structures of the church. This perspective suggests that her story resonates with those who fight for gender equality, showcasing the historical struggle against oppression. On the other hand, skeptics point to the fantastical elements of the story, including the dramatic circumstances of her birth during a public procession. They argue that these embellishments dilute the likelihood of her existence as a historical figure. Regardless of the debate surrounding her authenticity, the impact of Pope Joan's story cannot be overlooked. It has inspired countless works of art, literature, and feminist discourse, challenging perceptions of women in positions of power throughout history. The legacy of Pope Joan extends far beyond her intriguing story. Regardless of the veracity of her existence, she has become a symbol of female empowerment, 
challenging societal norms and inspiring generations to question the roles assigned to them. Joan's tale has reverberated through time, surfacing in various forms of art, literature, and popular culture. From novels and operas to films and plays, her story resonates as a powerful narrative of ambition, courage, and the fight against patriarchal constraints. In literature, she has been portrayed as both a heroic figure and a cautionary tale. Authors often use her story to explore themes of gender identity, power, and societal expectations, highlighting the struggles women face in pursuing their ambitions. Modern feminist movements have embraced Joan as an emblem of resistance, celebrating her defiance against the status quo. Her story serves as a reminder that women have always sought positions of authority and influence, despite the obstacles they face. In academic circles, Pope Joan is studied not just as a legend, but as a reflection of the historical realities faced by women. Scholars explore the implications of her story, examining how it sheds light on the gender dynamics of the church and society at large. Joan's legacy also prompts vital conversations about the representation of women in religion and leadership roles. As women continue to break barriers in various fields, her story reminds us that the struggle for equality is ongoing and that every step forward is built on the foundations laid by those who came before. In celebrating the legacy of Pope Joan, we honor not only a potential historical figure but also the countless women who have dared to dream, challenge, and redefine their roles in society. Her story encourages us to question the narratives we inherit and inspires us to create new paths for future generations. As we conclude our journey through the life and legacy of Pope Joan, let us carry forward her spirit of courage and resilience. Whether fact or fiction, her story remains a powerful testament to the enduring quest for equality and justice.